guys. So this video is going to be the video that you'll be watching on Tuesday um, for Unit 5, Week 2. I'm going to be discussing our ELA focus wall. I'm also going to be talking about our pencil page and um, your Tuesday activity on your schedule. So on your schedule for Tuesday, it's asking you guys to read um, all of the comprehension strategies for the week. So page 252, 253. 254 and 255. So if you're watching this video, I'm basically doing the lesson with you. So all you have to do is just follow along on this video. Um, if I ask you guys to do something, just go ahead and do it. Other than that, you don't need to write anything. This is your lesson for Tuesday. Okay. Um, so why don't we first start with our focus wall. Um, and then just an idea. Usually the focus wall is on this part of the pencil page. Um, hopefully you guys have a copy. If not, let me know because I did make copies for you guys to pick up at school. Um, so I'm going to be kind of going over this for our focus wall. Um, to start off, we are going to be talking about our comprehension strategy for the week, and that is to summarize. So we know that good readers summarize um, the materials that they have read. Remember, when I'm asking you to summarize, I don't want to know the entire story. Um, if I wanted to know the story, I would go and I would read it myself. Um, with me asking you to summarize, you're just giving me like the most important parts. So a lot of times you want to talk about the characters in the story, the setting, um, events that include a problem and a solution and maybe how the story ended or if there was a lesson involved. It's very similar to when you guys did your fairy tale projects. Remember, you didn't actually read me the whole fairy tale. You guys just kind of told me those major events in the story, your characters, the setting and everything. That's exactly what you need to do when you're summarizing. So our comprehension strategy for the week is to summarize. And the next thing we're gonna talk about is our comprehension skill. Our comprehension skill for the week is talking about point of view. I can tell who is sharing the story or giving the information when I talk about point of view. When you're talking about point of view, a lot of times it's going to be a narrator. So the person that's actually telling the story. Um, there can also be a character telling the story. They might use words such as I, me, us. Um, but other than that, point of view is not just who is telling the story, but it's maybe how a character feels in the story. So for example, um, we're going to get into it later, but the story that you guys had read about soccer friends, um, you're gonna be able to tell me how some characters felt in that story by giving me their point of view. So telling me how they felt, maybe what they did, sharing their part of the story of how things went down for them. So for our vocabulary, I'm sorry, our comprehension skill, we're talking about point of view this week. Um, our vocabulary strategy is going to be idioms. Um, idioms is a phrase that has a different meaning than what is being said. We kind of see these all the time and it's where it's like a silly sentence, but it has a meaning behind it. So for example, if I said, I'm so hungry, I can eat a horse. What I'm talking about is I'm not gonna go out and go eat a horse. I mean, I, you can't physically eat an entire horse, but what they're saying is a horse is a big animal. It's a lot of food, right? If I'm saying that I'm so hungry, I can eat a horse, I could, I could just eat a lot of food. I just feel super hungry. Um, but it's not really what it means. I can't physically go out and eat a horse. So that's an idiom. You're just kind of giving it, you're telling someone how you're feeling by using an exaggerated sentence. It's usually an exaggeration. And there was actually a couple in the story. We're going to get into that in a little bit. So hopefully you guys have found some. So this week for our vocabulary strategy, we're talking about idioms. Um, for grammar, let's see. Ooh, my hair. Um, so for grammar, we're going to be talking about pronouns. A, pron a pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun. Um, so if I was to say the noun of the teacher or um, the boy, you would replace that with certain pronouns. So for example, they give an example right here that says John is a mailman. They took the, the pronoun in this, I'm sorry, the proper noun, John, and they replace it with a pronoun such as he. So John is a boy, so they're giving um, the pronoun he instead of using John. So he is a mailman. Um, certain pronouns that we're going to see this week might be I, me, us, we, he, she, they, them. Those are all pronouns. So we're going to be talking about pronouns this week for our grammar. Um, let's see what's going on. Um, oh, our genre for the week is going to be fiction. Fiction is a made up story that includes characters, settings, and situations that could happen in real life, but it's usually a made up story. Um, so this week we are definitely gonna be reading some stories that are fiction, um, such as Once Upon a Baby Brother, which you're gonna be reading on Wednesday. Um, the story that you just read yesterday, which was Soccer Friends, was fiction. 
and then the story that you're going to be reading oh no just those two so the ones that the story that you read on monday and then the one that you'll be reading on wednesday is a fiction okay so this is our genre for the week um let's see let's go ahead and i'm going to go over your spelling words um before i pull that up i'll pull up your pencil page so you guys can follow along with me um but we are going to be working with the oi sound so oi makes an oi sound and oi makes an oi sound um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to pull up your pencil page so you guys can follow along with me. So let me go ahead and screen share. Sorry about that. Let me pull up my screen share for you guys. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to zoom in for you guys. Remember that we are working with the oi sound. Um, so here are your spelling words that you're going to see the same spelling. So the O-I and the O-Y. And we have, let's see, we have soil, broil, moist, point, toil, oil, toy, joy, coin, noise. And I'm emphasizing on the oi sound. So um, once again, you have soil, broil, moist, point, toil, oil, toy, joy, coin, and noise. Um, and then our bonus words down below are words that you guys should at this point you know how to spell because these are words that we've had um, up to this current unit. Um, so we have crown, sorry, mound, aisle, and remember the I needs to be capitalized with that apostrophe between the LL. Aisle is a contraction of I will. You have laugh and maybe. So those are your spelling words for the week, okay? Um, down below, we have some high frequency words. Um, and then these are just words that I usually have for you guys on my um, our vocabulary wall. Remember, if you do not know how to spell any of these words, it's a good time to add these words to your dictionaries. You have your dictionaries and your classwork folders. Um, so these are the words down below right here. Um, you have brought busy, else, happy, aisle, which is also your um, spelling word, um, laugh, love, maybe, please, and several. So those are words that you might wanna be adding to your dictionary. Those are the ones that I have up on my, my um, vocabulary wall. Um, some additional oral vocabulary words, um, some other words that you might wanna be using this week is audience, decorate, instructions, pretended, and shiver. Um, so those are words that you might want to be focusing on spelling and your vocabulary words, which I hope a lot of you guys have already seen the, um, the vocab words on connect ed, which if not, you should be doing them anyways for your five things. Um, we have amused. Amused means to make, um, sorry, made to smile or laugh. We have cooperate, which means to work together. Describe means to give a picture of something in words. So you're giving it a description, you're describing it. Entertained means to keep interested. Um, imagination is the ability to create new ideas or images. A lot of times that happens inside your head. Interact is to act and react with someone else. So usually when you're playing with someone or you're talking with them, you're interacting with them. You're interacting, you're, you're acting or you're doing something with somebody else. Patient is able to put up with trouble without being and um, without anger. So if you know you're getting frustrated with somebody, maybe at home that they're not listening to you, you need to be patient. So you need to put up with um, with that trouble without getting angry. Peaceful is another word for saying calm. So those are your vocabulary words for the week. Um, make sure that you are getting these memorized. Um, you do have your test on Friday. I think that's it, pretty much for your pencil page. Um, Once Upon a Baby Brother is going to be your test, your selection quiz this week. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the word wall and your pencil page. Um, next, let's go ahead and talk about your assignment for Tuesday. Um, so just a little bit of a recap, because I usually do that with you guys. You should have started on this page on the computer. Our essential question is, how do people get along? So the biggest thing I want you guys to focus on this week is seeing how characters are getting along with each other. Are they being patient? Um, are they staying calm? What are some of your other vocab words I'm trying to use? Um, 
Are they cooperating with each other? Are they interacting? So those are the kind of things I really want you guys to talk about is how are characters maybe getting along in the story or maybe how they're not getting along in the story. Um, you guys should have read a story called Soccer Friends. Um, Stalker Friends, Soccer Friends is about a girl who has a problem on the soccer field. And um, you guys at this point um, should know who the characters are, um, what the setting is, what the events are, the problem and the solution. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to pause my video and I want you to kind of give yourself a second to figure out the su like the summary of the story. Tell me who the characters were, the setting, um, what was the problem. If the story says that there's a girl who has a problem on the soccer field, who is the girl that has a problem? What is the problem? How did it get solved? So what I want you to do right now is pause my video and I want you to go and figure that out and answer it out loud or in your head. Okay, so hopefully you guys have an answer that. Um, me, I kind of went back and I reread the story and I realized that, you know, some of the main characters in the story um, was a girl named Kelly and also a girl, a new girl named Selena. Of course, we know that there's a coach, but that's not one of my main characters. Um, the story takes place outside on a soccer field. And what I noticed when I reread the story was I was starting to understand Kelly's point of view, maybe how she was feeling, because the big problem in the story was, you know, Kelly felt like she was like really good at soccer. And then what happened was a new girl joined the team named Selena, um, who was actually a really fast runner. And it kind of made Kelly feel a certain way. Um, she wasn't very happy about not being the best on the team anymore. But you know, there was a little bit of a problem from that, which was she didn't kind of wasn't sure she wanted her on the team or how she would interact with that girl. Um, but in the end, they were able to work together. Um, they were able to win the soccer game and they, they were able to actually become friends in the end. Um, it even talks about that they, you know, wanted to practice together and hang out afterwards. So we learned that the whole premise of the story was learning how these two, how specific, specifically Kelly learned how to get along with a new girl. Um, and how she was able to have her on her soccer team without, you know, not wanting her there because she was like really good. So that's like a little bit of a summary. I hope you guys kind of went into a little bit more detail than I did. Um, but really, just as long as you talk about the characters, the setting, the events, which include the problem and the solution, or maybe even the lesson at the end of the story, you did a great job summarizing for me, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do screen share of talking about our strategies for the week. Remember, if you're doing this with me, you don't need to read it. You're completing your assignment right now with me. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to screen share once again. I'm going to show you guys the book. So here we go. All right. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to kind of just zoom in for us. Okay. Um, our comprehension strategy for the week is to summarize, and I'm going to be just reading it for you guys, okay? It says, to summarize the story, you tell only the most important events and details of the story, your own words, and use details from the story to summarize, okay? So they kind of give you guys a little bit of an example right here. Um, they wanted us to go back and read page 349, and they wanted you to summarize what happened on that story. Um, it says, after reading page 349 of Soccer Friends, I can summarize what happens at the beginning of the story by retelling key events and details. And here's their little summary right here. I read that Kelly is worried that the new girl on the soccer team will be faster runner than she is. This right here is the problem of the story. They did a really good job proving it by telling me, by pointing to what paragraph they found it in. Remember, Kelly is really good at soccer and she enjoys soccer, but when this new girl jumped on, um, she was kind of afraid that she'd be the faster runner and she might not like soccer as much if, if she wasn't that good. So right here is the problem. Um, remember, we talked about the solution. Every problem has a solution. A story would not be good if there was no problem and a solution. So they summarized the problem, and then we kind of talked about already the solution to the story was they ended up working together on the soccer field. They um, scored some points, and they ended up winning the soccer game. Um, they talked about the winning goal. Um, they talked about even, you know, being friends afterwards and, um, going over to each other's houses and playing and practicing together. So we talked about specifically how these two girls learned how to cooperate 
how they worked together to become friends, okay? So this right here is our comprehension strategy of summarizing. You're going back. And remember, a lot of times in order to do well in these areas, you do need to reread the story. I personally had to reread the story twice. Um, if you guys are using the computer, these little um, microphones right here, these little speakers read it for you. So that's kind of fun. It gives you, you know, a little break of reading yourself. All right. So the next page tells us page 353. And it's talking about point of view. Um, point of view is what the characters think about the events in the story. Look for clues about a character's point of view in the text. So remember, point of view doesn't necessarily need to be who's telling the story, but how a character is feeling. And we talked about that earlier. Um, so here's one example. On page 350, Kelly is upset that she lost the race to Selena. Kelly says, it stinks to get beaten. This is a clue about Kelly's point of view. So we know that Kelly is a character in the story. She's not telling the story um, because... We know she's not telling the story because there's little quotation marks. So the narrator is giving her credit for what this character is saying. So my character is Kelly. The clue that they've used from the story is it stinks to get beaten. What's the point of view? Her point of view is she doesn't want to lose. Why doesn't she want to lose? Because winning is extremely important for her. So we're understanding a little bit about this character is, is she doesn't like to lose. She likes to be the best at what she like, whatever she is um, and whatever she's doing. And more importantly to her, as a character, winning is probably the most important thing. So what I want you to do right now, um, I want you guys to pause my video, and I want you guys to figure out, let's see if we could do another one. I wanna see if you guys can find another thing that Kelly says in the story, and I want you to tell me what it is that she's saying, it's usually in quotation marks, and I want you to tell me how that character is feeling at that time. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna pause my video and I want you to go right now into the story online and find something else that Kelly says and figure out what the point of view she has right now. Okay, so hopefully if you guys had done it, maybe you guys had gone in and picked something out. Um, let's see if I could find one and see if maybe you guys have the same one for me. Um, I went to page 349, okay? And I read on the second paragraph, it says, let's see, I just had it, sorry about that. Oh, I'm sorry, it's in the third paragraph. It says, at first Kelly held her tongue and said nothing. She was worried. She had always been the fastest runner on the team. Then she said, I can beat her. So I took the sentence, I can beat her, which is what Kelly said, and I'm gonna try to figure out what she means by that. I'm gonna also connect it to that winning is super important and she likes to be the best of what she is. So if she likes to be the fastest runner, she wants to beat everyone. So that's gonna kind of connect to the point of view of Kelly. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? Um, if you have time and you wanna pause this video to go find more, you're more than welcome to. If not, I am gonna be moving on by going to the next page, which is page 354. All right, so page 354 is fiction. Um, this is the genre that we're working for the week, um, and it says the story Soccer Friends is fiction. Fiction has made-up characters and events, so a made-up character would be Kelly and Selena. Um, some made-up events would be that these girls are on a soccer team, a new girl joins the soccer team, um, one of the girls is better at running than the other, and they play a game, and so on and so forth. These are all made-up stories. This is a made-up story, so it has made-up characters and made-up events. Um, and a fiction usually has a problem and a solution. We learned that the problem in the story was that Kelly liked to be the fastest runner. She wanted to be the best soccer player. Um, the problem is a new girl came in and she felt like that girl was going to be better than her. Um, the solution part of the story was that they ended up winning the soccer game by working together, by cooperating together. Um, and they learned, Kelly specifically learned the lesson that um, you know, just because you have someone that's better than you, it actually does benefit you having someone like that on your team. So that would be the solution. Um, we're gonna read just a little bit right here. It says, I can use what I have read to tell that soccer friends is fiction. The characters and setting are made up. There is also a problem and a solution. So here, right here, talks about that specific problem. In the beginning of the story, I see that there is a problem. Kelly is worried that the new girl on the soccer team might be faster than she is. So right here, they summarize telling me what the problem um, in the story was. 
Okay, so once again, that is our fiction, our genre. It is a made up story with made up characters, events, um, and a problem and a solution, okay? Um, the next thing we're gonna talk about is our vocabulary strategy for the week. Um, that is gonna be idioms. And let's go ahead and read what idioms is. Idioms are words or phrases that have different meanings than the real meanings of the words. Look for the clues in the nearby words or sentences to find the meaning of an idiom. Um, remember an idiom is a sentence that does not actually mean what it means, what it says. It's kind of a little bit of like an exaggeration, okay? Um, they even gave us a little example right here. It says, I read that Kelly would fly towards the ball. I know that people cannot fly, so this must be an idiom. Another sentence tells how the Kelly enjoys racing to get the ball. I think this idiom means that Kelly moves quickly. Well, let's check out what she's talking about. In the, sen um, in the story, this is a paragraph from it. It says, she would use her imagination to picture the ball and then she would fly towards it. The reason why this is an idiom is, you know, people don't actually fly. It's not like we have wings and we can go and just fly towards what we're working on. When you're usually talking about somebody flying, you're usually talking about them moving super fast. So if she says, that she flies towards it, it means that she's picturing herself, she's got this imagination of her going super fast towards the ball. And the reason why they use this idiom is two things. It's a little bit of an exaggeration to show you guys how fast she thinks she's moving, but it also is to create an imagination in your head. If I picture somebody flying towards something, I don't picture them with wings, I, I picture them going super flat, super, super fast, like flash, hopefully you guys know who that is, right? Um, I kind of picture them moving extremely fast. So an idiom in this sense actually helps you with your imagination and giving you a picture in your head. Um, what I want you guys to do right now is pause my video and see if you can find me another idiom. See if there's something else in the story that um, says something that doesn't actually mean what is being read. Um, so go ahead and pause it right now and see if you can find another one. All right. So hopefully you guys are done with that. Um, at this point, you guys are pretty much done with your lesson that I've asked for on Tuesday. Um, really quickly, after since we have done this lesson together, you guys are free to move on to your turn practice workbook. Um, what I kind of just want to go over really quickly with you is, um, remember you guys get to skip the fluency read. Um, if you look at your schedule, it tells you to work on page 217, 218, 219, and 220. You are working on four pages by yourself. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to connect the genre that we just talked about. You're going to read a story called Sharing the Class Pet. You're going to tell me how you know that this is a fiction story, right? We just learned that fiction is a made-up story with made-up characters, made-up settings, um, it has a problem and a solution. So see if you can find any of those um, clues in this story. And then it's even asking you to summarize the problem and a solution. I hope you guys are giving me complete sentence. So it says, what is the problem? The problem in the story is blah, 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 right? Um, the solution in the story is what? You're gonna go ahead and fill that in by summarizing those two details right here. Okay. Um, the next thing you're going to work on is page 218, okay? Um, I could probably do one or two with you guys, maybe get you guys kind of, if you're watching my video, it's gonna help you guys get you guys through this classwork, okay? Um, I'm basically reading right here. So if you don't have it, please grab this out right now. I'll wait like just a couple seconds or not, pause my video. It says, an idiom is a word or a phrase that has a different meaning than the real meaning of the words. So we kind of talked about that, like flying towards the ball. Read each sentence and look at the idiom in bold print and write the meaning of the idiom. So why don't I do numbers one and two with you guys? See if I can help you out there. Let me grab a pen. Number one says, so right here, I'm on number one, okay? Number one says, before the talk could get out of hand, Mr. Webb spoke up. So does it mean that something's actually getting out of my hand or what do you guys think that means? I personally think when someone says before the talk gets out of hand, it means that they're losing control, right? If I don't have it in my hand, like let's say I have a ball in my hand and it leaves my hand, I don't have control of the ball anymore. So when they say that something is getting out of hand, it's not that it's leaving your hand, it's saying that you lose control. So getting out of hand, I would say that that idiom means that you no longer have control. 
So I'm gonna put no longer have control. And in this case, Mr. Webb doesn't have control of people talking. So I'm gonna show this for a second. If you wanna pause it so you can write it in, you're more than welcome to. If not, I'm gonna keep going. Number two says, they knew if they all pulled together, they could put on a great play. So am I saying that everyone pulls together and they put on a good play? Or what do you guys think means to pull together? They knew if they all pulled together, they would put on a great play. So what I would put, and if you guys have something different for me, but it's similar, it's totally fine. When I think of somebody pulling together, I would say that they're, and I might use a vocabulary word, that they're cooperating, they're working together. Um, so maybe for your definition, you guys might want to use your vocabulary word. I think that's great. You could say that um, they're cooperating together. They're working together. I'll leave it up to you guys. I'm going to put that everyone worked together. Everyone worked together. Put a period. I forgot my period for my last one. So I went ahead and put everyone works together or everyone works together. I might even want to put that they're cooperating together. Okay. All right. So I pretty much did two of them for you. You just have three more to do. Um, the next thing you're going to do is page 219. Um, you are going to be reading this story. Um, they're basically asking you guys to add details for number one. So for example, the draft model reads, and I'm reading it right here. Jake had to do a project. It was for science. He and his friends worked together. It made that work go faster. They built a toy rocket ship. Soon they were done. So they want to know which of these sentences could you make longer. So which of these sentences might you add a lot more details? So I don't know about you, but maybe for me, I might want to add a detail about the project. So I might want to add more details for this one. Jake had to do a project. So maybe I would talk about the project he had to do. So maybe my project would be um, something science related because it looks like they're talking about building a toy rocket ship. So I might add details about what the project is that the teacher is asking them to do. Um, number two says, which sentence could you combine? So remember, you can combine it with a, with a conjunction, maybe and, but, or, or so, because. So maybe underline two sentences that you might want to combine together. And then maybe for number two, you could tell me the word that you would use to connect the sentence. Um, number three says, how can you make the sentence flow from one to the next? How about a transition word? You guys know we've been talking about transition words all year. So was there any sentences that might want to transition word? Maybe first, next, then last. So finally, in conclusion. These are just some fun ways. So then what you're gonna do is add all those details and rewrite it down here below, okay? Um, and then you guys actually do very well usually on this page. So for page 220, um, you're gonna be reading the story. Just a little reminder, um, you guys are a little bit of ahead of the game. So we're not gonna actually read the story until Wednesday, but you don't really need to read the story to understand this. Um, but they're gonna be talking about the story Once Upon a Baby Brother, and you are reading that tomorrow, so Wednesday, okay? Um, just go ahead and circle the clues. You're basically giving me um, a bunch of information about the source. I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys want, maybe at the end of this video, I'll go over the answers for the pages that you completed on Monday. So right now, why don't you guys, how about this and how about a red pen? Um, why don't we go over these answers together? So go ahead and um, pause my video and then pull out a red pen and this paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this time to give you guys the answers for page 211 and 212. So go ahead and pause my video. Grab out a red pen and your paper. Okay, so hopefully you guys have your red pens out. Um, I have this really cool thing on my computer where it has the answers written for you guys instead of me having to write it in and show you guys this way. I'm gonna screen share and I'm gonna go over the answers, okay? Let me go ahead and screen share. Please make your corrections right now on red pen. Okay, so I'm gonna go over your vocabulary words that you should have filled in. Sorry, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, number one, the it keeps moving. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm not gonna touch it anymore. Okay, number one, the book club members talk and interact with each other when they meet. 
Number two, the singers entertained the people at the show. Number three, my friends amused us with his funny jokes. Number four, the firefighters work together or cooperate to put out the fire. Now, before I move on, remember how I told you guys that sometimes they give you the definition of a word by the comma. So this one, the word cooperates inside the comma and this right here would be my context clues to tell me what cooperate means. So just a little piggyback off of what we've been learning this year. So cooperate means to work together and they gave you the definition in the separations of the commas, okay? Number five says, when there is a long line at lunch, you must be patient. Six, it is easy to relax in a peaceful place. Number seven, can you describe the drawing you made? Number eight, you can write a good story when you use your imagination. So why don't you correct those? Tell me how many you got correct out of eight. If you got eight out of eight, give yourself a high five. Um, if not, make sure you guys are studying these for your test for Friday, okay? Um, let's go over the answers for page 212. So two letters blended together can stand for one vowel sound. The letters O-Y and O-I can stand for the vowel sound in boy and foil. Your directions were to read each sentence and circle the word with the vowel sound you hear in boy. Write the word on the line and circle the letters that spell the vowel sound. So for number one, it says the girl plays with the toy truck. You should have circled toy and the oy sound would come from the O-Y. So you should have circled the O-Y in toy. Number two, we'll plant seeds in the soil and watch them grow. You should have circled soil um, and the oy comes from the O-I. Dad will boil eggs in a pot on the stove. You should have circled boil, which are your spelling words. Um, and the oi sound comes from the oi. Number four says, number four says the baby giggles with joy when she is tickled. So the word that you should have circled was joy and the oi makes the oi sound. Okay, tell me how many got right out of four. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna break up your syllables. So it says when a word ends in L-E, the consonant before it plus the letters L-E form the last syllable. This sound is an end syllable, can also be spelled as A-L or E-L. So read each word and, excuse me, draw a line between the syllables and write each syllable. Now I've shown you guys two ways in class. You can clap it out, you can use your jaw. If we did needle, so, what the rule box is telling you that the le is in the last part of the syllable but it also is the consonant that comes before that remember consonant is everything that's not a vowel we know a vowel is a e i o u sometimes y consonants would be like b c d f g and so on so they're saying that the le is going to be the second part of the syllable and so is the consonant that comes before it so in this case it's me Dull. So, and they also said that it's not just L-E, but it could be spelled A-L or E-L. So you'll see right here, they've got the E-L and the consonant before. So it's separated as bagel, okay? Local, local. So you see the A-L here with the consonant C before it. Puzzle. Now this one was kind of tricky because remember when they double up on the consonants, you do separate those. So in this case, you go with the L-E and the consonant Z. So the Z's will be separated. So puzzle, okay? All right, go ahead and total that up out of eight. I hope you guys did well. Um, other than that, I think we're good. If you guys finish this video, you guys are good for your ELA. You just need to finish your practice um, workbook pages on your own. So you need to finish page 217, the rest of page 218, the rest of page 219, and finally, the other page for 220. Um, look for this video every Tuesday. Um, I will have it posted to kind of review everything with you. Um, if something was challenging or something did not make sense to you, please shoot me over a message or have your parents message me and I have no problem teaching it to you. All right, my loves, you have a great day. Love you, miss ya. Toodaloo.